Hello, my name is Jesper and welcome to this channel. In this video, I will talk about lung cancer. It will be a video which is in the playlist for our pathology videos. So it will be mostly in relation with pathology, but we will go over the epidemiology, the pathogenesis, some statistics, pathological morphology, and the types of lung cancer, as well as metastatical spread and we will talk a little bit about radiological features on the diagnostics. Let's get started. Lung tumors are one of the most frequently occurring cancers worldwide, and it is also the most common cancer mortality. In today's society, many people are frequently exposed to major risk factors such as cigarette smoke, pollution from industry and cars, radon exposure, as well as previous radiation exposure such as in medical imaging. Another factor for certain workers is asbestos. Tumors can arise from different cells within the lung. These cells are generally divided into differentiated or undifferentiated cells. The differentiated cells are the basal cells, which are considered as the progenitor cells for ciliated mucus and neuroendocrine cells. The undifferentiated cells are the pneumocytes of type 1 and type 2, which form the epithelial lining of the inner surface of the lung. The carcinogens that are inhaled will bind to DNA within the cell nucleus, and when it's binding to the DNA, it will then change the DNA sequence. This will then alert and activate the cell's own repair processes, which will then aim to regenerate the original DNA sequence. If this is successful and the cell is repaired, then no cancer will form, but if the cell is not unable to if if the cell is not able to repair the DNA sequence, then the cell either will go into apoptosis, which is a form of programmed cell death and the cell will therefore die, or it will live on but a mutation is created. This can then be the progenitor for further cancer formation. If the carcinogen binds to a region which codes for an oncogene or for a tumor suppressor gene, then the likelihood of developing cancer will be even higher. Because when activated, oncogenes can lead to uncontrolled cell growth and proliferation. Tumor suppressor genes, however, induce apoptosis in cells, but when these are then changed or deactivated, this function will be reduced and there might be uncontrolled growth and proliferation because the inhibition of apoptosis. Smokers make up nearly 90% of lung cancer cases and therefore smoking is a huge risk factor for lung cancer. There is a direct relationship between the duration as well as the quantity of smoking with lung cancer. Another factor is genetic predisposition, family history, may also increase the risk of development. Women are prone to developing lung cancer earlier from smoking than men. However, fewer women smoke tobacco, so that's why the statistics of men and women are rather similar. Let's talk about some of the morphology. Carcinogens, as I said, induce cancer by binding to the DNA sequence and changing it. This will lead to morphological changes, which will be in a specific order observed before it can be observed as a cancer. At first, we will see squamous metaplasia, which is the transformation of respiratory epithelium to squamous epithelium. This is done in order to protect the cells against irritations, uh, irritants such as cigarette smoke. After the cells change their shape to squamous epithelium, dysplasia may occur. This is the process of proliferation and rearrangement of the cells that have undergone metaplasia. The combination of metaplasia and dysplasia may lead to formation of a carcinoma in situ, which is a cancer that has not yet penetrated the basal membrane or any of the surrounding tissues yet. This may over time prog progress into an invasive carcinoma and will give rise to metastasis to different sites of the body. Histologically, 
changes in the lung tissue will develop before clinical symptoms are apparent, and we call the preform of the cancer precursor lesions. They often do not cause any symptoms before metastasis, but for pathology this is important to know. For lung tumors, we differentiate between three distinct precursor lesions. The first is the squamous dysplasia, which we talked about, which is a carcinoma in situ, meaning it hasn't yet invaded the surrounding tissue or the basal membrane. It is a precursor for squamous cell carcinoma. Secondly, we will talk about atypical adenomatous hyperplasia, which is a precursor lesion for bronchoalveolar carcinoma, which is a form of adenocarcinoma. The third precursor lesion is diffuse idiopathic pulmonary neuroendocrine cell hyperplasia. This is a precursor lesion for pulmonary carcinoids. Types of lung cancer. We differentiate lung cancer types into being either small cell carcinoma or non-small cell carcinoma. Around 80% of cases are non-small cell carcinoma, and types of non-small cell carcinomas are squamous cell carcinoma, adenocarcinoma, large cell carcinoma. The treatment and prognosis of the, these non-small cell carcinomas are similar, and that's why they're grouped together. On the other side, there is the small cell carcinomas, which tend to spread faster, they're more aggressive and often have a worse prognosis, and they're often not discovered until after metastasis. Lung tumors can occur in the whole lung, but statistics show that generally, lung tumors tend to aggravate in the upper lobe rather in the lower. Also, more commonly in the periphery than centrally in the lung. However, it might occur anywhere. When a tumor is located on the very top part of the lung, we call it a pan-coastal tumor. This can invade the surrounding nerves, such as those from the brachial plexus, and may cause severe shoulder pain and neurological symptoms. Metastasis. Lung tumors often develop symptoms first after they have spread, and the most frequently observed primary sites for metastasis of lung cancer is the brain. This is followed by spread to the bone, then liver, and then the adrenal gland. As the disease progresses, the likelihood of multiple metastases increase. Radiology. We have made a separate video on radiological examination of the lung, if you have not seen it yet, you can click on the banner above. Lung tumors can be diagnosed using different imaging techniques, of which taking a chest x-ray is the most often imaging technique of choice. In an x-ray, a lung tumor presents as a dense mass with clear borders. It usually has clear borders and may or may not present with solid or a senior pattern inside the mass. The surrounding tissue presents with a turbid ground glass appearance, which is said to be a milky, nearly whitish discoloration of the lung tissue. Also, air bronchograms can be observed. This is due to the opacification of the surrounding lung tissue in contrast to the bronchi, which makes the bronchi more visible. Thank you for watching this overview on lung cancer in relation to pathology. Hope it was helpful and hope to see you in the next video. Bye bye.